Hey, I'm Skyler. Hey, I'm so excited to, uh, uh, to be talking to you guys. Um, today we're going to be doing a testimonial. Uh, Lord laid it on my heart to do a testimonial on how he taught me how to read the Word. Yes, he taught me how to read the Word. Uh, we also got teachings the Lord's laid on our heart to uh, start doing and putting out. And some other videos coming you guys' way. So I, I pray it blesses you guys. And uh, on the teachings, we've got how to hear from God. Um, we've got uh, healing. We've got uh, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, the love of God. We've got numerous teachings. The Lord is just uh, he's released within my heart. Uh, to share with you guys and I'm gonna tell you right now I'm not going to I'm not gonna share anything with you through the Word of God that God has not taught me himself um, I think that's important and when we're giving our testimony or we're sharing the Word of God is that we're not sharing it from a uh, to put it better in a better way we're sharing it from a place of where God has taught us personally because God has no respecter of persons. What he can and will do through one person, he can and will do through someone else. So anyway, uh, there's also going to be walk and talks coming your way. Uh, where just on certain days, there's just going to be uh, where the Lord has laid something on my heart. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about it. Because I know if the Lord's laid it on my heart, it can be some something to help someone else out there. And uh, we got to equip the church. Because it's now. Time is now. we got to rise up. And uh, we are children of God, and we gotta walk in the children, as, walk as children of God. So uh, let's get into this. And um, today, <clears throat> uh, like I told you before, it's my testimony on how uh, the Lord taught me how to read the Word. Uh, I didn't grow up in church. Uh, matter of fact, my mom, my mom grew up in church, but my uh, my mom really didn't uh, have me in church. I was ever once in a while, maybe my, what my wife calls a creaster. A uh, Christmas and Easter uh, church tender every once in a while not very often so uh, my experience with uh, church was not I would say very good my mom and I helped to uh, take care of my grandmother and uh, a grandpa growing up and they had my grandma had cancer and my uh, grandpa had Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and so <clears throat> there was times when uh, my view of Christians was not very good, unfortunately. And uh, uh, when my after my grandmother passed away, my grandpa passed away first, and my grandmother passed away after that, uh, uh, we were actually kicked out of our house by Christians and left homeless for a while. And so my view of of who Christians said I should be and would preach at me the word and would beat me over the head with the word. Uh, the Lord taught me, he says, that's not who I am. And so, uh, fast forward to seven years ago, the Lord showed me, he goes, I've been with you all this time. And, you know, he said, that's not who I am. And uh, he's loving, he's kind, and he wants that personal relationship with uh, me. He wants it with you. Uh, so, here's a little testimony on uh, what he's shown me through uh, teaching me how to read the Word. And so, I... Uh, I used to hate to read, couldn't stand to read. Matter of fact, in English class, teachers would say, you gotta read X amount of books and write book reports and everything. All part of the experience, guys, got a bug on the glasses. But uh, uh, teachers would tell me I have to do book reports and everything. Well, I'd be like, <clears throat> can I watch a movie instead? So anyway, uh, that's just me, but the Lord got a hold of me seven years ago and I could not, I knew I had to get to know God. I had to understand who he is. And so, um, through, I, I sat down, here, and here's my story. <clears throat> I sat down to read the word, and I didn't understand anything. I didn't understand anything whatsoever. I didn't understand what was going on. And until I ran across John 14, I got my trusty notes right here. <clears throat> John 14, 16 through 17. Check this out. And this is from the Amplified Version. Everybody knows that Paul read out of the Amplified Version, right? <clears throat> and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby, okay? To be with you forever. Be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive or take to its heart because it does not see him 
or know him. This word know is means intimate, okay? But you know him because the he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually. I'm going to say that again. Because you know him. This word know means intimate. Because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually all the time and will be in you. I ran across that scripture and it set a fire within my heart. And I said, okay, the Holy Spirit, since you're with me, I need your help. So <clears throat> I went on, John 14, 26, later on, because that was John 14, 16 through 17. John 14, 26 says this, but the helper, the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. This is Amplified Version. He will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that I have told you that's that's powerful I have to read that again to you he will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that I have told you I don't know if any of you guys remember um, the old Rolodexes back in the day you used to keep um, telephone numbers on the Lord I said Lord I use this scripture right here John 14 26 I said Lord through your Holy Spirit you said in your word that you will teach me all things. So if you, this is you, then you teach me how to read your word. So I close my eyes and like a Rolodex, the Lord, as I would read, the Lord would show me pictures and unfold his scriptures. He would like through the pictures would help me understand what he was saying. This was the power of the Holy Spirit. And <clears throat> It's amazing that after that, he caught a, I caught a fire in my heart and passion for the Holy Spirit. That even when I met my wife, I mean, one of the first things that her and I were talking about was the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. And his um, interpersonal relationship with us of he will teach us all things. I've never memorized a scripture in my life. I know a lot of people teach that you need to memorize scripture. I've never memorized scripture in my life. Why? Because I stand on John 14, 26. It says, he will teach you all things. Praise God. And he will help you, help you remember everything that I have told you. I don't remember scripture at all. It just comes up out of my heart. It does. I can just feel it. I, and it comes to my, my memory. We'll, we'll explain all that, how the Holy Spirit talks to us, how, um, how we can hear his voice and everything, and uh, how we can discern the three voices of God, ourselves, and Satan. We're going to talk about that, but um, I don't remember Scripture at all. I'll be honest with you. I don't memorize Scripture. What I do is study the Word. I get it in my heart. I study it. I speak it out. And the Word in the Joshua 1.8 says that we meditate on the Word day and night. I meditate on the Word. There's sometimes there's just one Scripture, one verse that just pops out at me, and I meditate on that Scripture. And it just, God unfolds that and, and unpacks it for me. And so I meditate on the Word, and I speak it out. In Psalms, it says that life death or in the power of the tongue i speak it out i speak it because when you speak it it's life or it's death i i speak god's word out of my of my mouth and so what god's shown me about the about the bible i want to check this out you know what the bible is <clears throat> the bible is discovering god's intimate presence made manifest all throughout the bible from genesis to revelation that is something god he's shown me it's a journey that god taken us through manifesting himself to people okay that's what god did to me that's what, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that's what he did to me. He took me from not even liking to read, to loving the word, to wanting to know more about him, to craving any more, more craving even more about him. And I'm so excited. I'm so, so, so excited to share that with you guys. Because I know there's many of you out there who want that with intimate relationship with the Lord. And I'm telling you what right now, and I know some of you might hear this and think, well, you're crazy. And that's fine, uh, because I think you're crazy if you don't live like this. And that's perfectly fine. That you, like, If you don't want more of God, then you stick with your same old, same old, and that's fine. But God wants more, more. He wants more of a relationship with you. And unfortunately, the Lord, uh, unfortunately, a lot of Christians have, have, a lot of Christians know about know about God because they say words on a page they know about God but they don't know him when when the scripture that says that says 
I've healed the Lord, but Lord, Lord, they've cried upon me, Lord, Lord. I've healed the sick. We've raised the dead in your name. Turn away from me for I never knew you. That word knew right there is an intimate relationship. It's saying, listen, you've done all that stuff. Yes, but you never knew me. In the Bible, go back to Genesis. It says, Adam knew Eve and they conceived. They knew him uh, intimately, okay? It's saying, listen, you did that stuff illegally. You did that stuff on your own. You didn't do stuff because I told you to go do it. You weren't listening to my voice. The key is, are we listening to his voice? Are we doing the things that he's asked us to do? That is blessed itself. Instead of doing stuff for God, for God, and asking for his blessing. There's two different uh Two differences right there and we'll get into some of that later but um, yeah. we are born Christians we are born as of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God let's go to first Peter 1 23 for you have been born again that is reborn from above spiritually transformed renewed and set apart for his purpose not of the seed which is perishable but from which is seed that's imperishable and immortal, that is through the living and everlasting word of God. This is not saying that this is not saying that you it's not something you're trying to get. I think a lot of Christians misunderstand that it's not something that you're trying to get. When you read the New Testament, it, it, it's it's directed a lot of times from the point of who you are already. It's not something you're trying to get. You are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to James 1.18. It says, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, the creator and sustainer of the heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising, no settling, no setting, or shadow cast by his turning, for he is perfect and never changes. It is of his own will that he gave us birth as his children. You're, we're children of God. This is an everyday life. This is uh, what I'm telling you about here is in everyday life, okay? By the we're, okay? It is of his will that he gave us birth as his children by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. A prime example of what he created to be set apart to himself, sanctified, made holy for his divine purposes, okay? It's, <clears throat> that's powerful. We're citizens of heaven, Philippians 3.20 says. This is not who you're trying to obtain or when we die. This is who we are. These are scriptures that God laid on my heart that showed me, that teach, taught me that from a perspective of identity, of who I was. That's also another teaching we're going to be talking about. Ephesians 3. Now, Ephesians is powerful, is, is super powerful because Ephesians 1 through 3 talks about our identity. Anybody that is... Um, of course, they're all amazing. They're powerful. But um, the chapters 1 through 3 of Ephesians are about identity. It's super powerful. It's who we are in Christ. 4 through 6 are about, how, okay, now that you know your identity, how do we walk this thing out? Colossians is the same thing. Okay, the chapters, there's four chapters. 1 and 2, they mirror each other. They say a little bit things different. But you can see that it's the same, same principle. Chapters 1 and 2 are identity. 4 and 5 are uh sorry three and four are um are uh, how do we walk this thing out so uh ephesians 3 17 through 19 says so that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love may be fully capable of comprehending 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 with all the saints, God's people, of course. If you're a saint, raise your hand. I'm a saint. You're God's people. Praise God. The width, with the width, length, and height, and depth of his love. Fully exp experiencing, experiencing that amazing, endless love. And that you may come to know practically and through a personal experience. The love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. <clears throat> that you may be filled up through your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have ex the experience, richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled to overflowing with God himself. That's 
Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. It's not about mere knowledge, head knowledge. It's about your heart knowledge, revelation of who you are in Christ and being able to walk this out. There's many Christians that can tell me about God, but they don't know God. And you, I'm telling you what, God, right now, I'm doing the videos because God put it on my heart, my wife's heart, that what I, I can hear him now. He's saying, I'm calling you to me. Are you going to walk in who I created you to be? You're a child of God. We don't need, the world doesn't need, um, the world does not need uh, people that say they're Christians but act like the world. We are called to be set apart. We're children of God. How we be children of God is, and how we know who we are, first of all, the Spirit and the Word agree. So, so the uh, when we're in relationship with, with the Lord, not through just reading the word, but we have to be hearing his voice as well. And so that's that's what oops, that's what I'm trying to convey. The word is the word of God. Ready for this? Oh man, this is powerful. The word of God is to be spiritually discerned. Okay, this is First Corinthians 2, 14 through 16. Check this out. It's through the Passion Translation. Now, I know some people are hazy on the Passion Translation, but it works. Okay, and when you study the word, read them. Read multiple translations. So don't just stick with one translation. Read multiple translations because you will get a full rounded picture of what God is trying to tell you through a more full rounded picture. Don't just stick with one 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 uh, with one scripture uh, translation. Okay, it says First Corinthians two fourteen through sixteen, and we'll work on eventually. I'll get these uh, the uh, verses up so where you can you can catch them and pause it and go through them. So. Someone living from on an entirely human level rejects the revelations of God's Spirit, for they make no sense to him. He cannot understand the revelations of the Spirit because they are only discovered by the illuminations of the Spirit. Those who live in the Spirit are able to carefully evaluate all things, and they are subject to scrutiny of no one but God. For who has ever intimately known the mind of the Lord Yahweh well enough to become his counselor. Christ says, and we possess, we have the mind of Christ. It says, we have the mind of Christ. First, uh, in the first Corinthians uh, 2.16, in the Amplified, that was a passage trans, the Amplified says, for who has known the mind and purposes of the Lord so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. <clears throat> I think that's, it's not telling us something we're trying to get, okay? This is, telling us who we are we have the mind of christ not of obviously up here but in our spirit now when i go over spirit soul and body we'll talk about how to draw things out of your spirit and how to release the things that are already in your born again spirit uh, but the philippians course 2 5 says now let this mind that was in also in christ jesus be in you let you have something to do with that you have to be submit to God. James 4, 7 says this. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Active, that, that resist means actively fight against. And he will flee from you. Submission to God is key to relationship. It's a humility. Okay? Uh, but let's go on. Let's go on. Uh, God wants to move supernaturally in your life. Uh, I'm, I, and I'm telling you this. Uh, through my testimony God is no respecter of persons what he can and will do through me he can and will do through other people uh, and through you uh, and like I said uh, some of you may hear this and you're like man I want that I want that fire I, you know I want that what God God has for me praise God that's the Holy Spirit you hear him inside you that's the Holy Spirit you want more praise God and more he's got more for you the more the more you know him the more you want to know him more, okay? And the more you know him, the more you know who you are in him. And like I said, and there's some some people that hear this and you're like, you're, this is nuts. This is out there. This is crazy. I've never heard of such a thing. And that's fine. You know, that's not fine from my perspective, but if you want to live like that, you know, that's up to you. God wants more for you. And I'll tell you right now, uh... It says in Mark seven thirteen says, making the word of no effect through traditions which you've handed down, 
so uh, the words of no effect through doctrines and traditions of uh, man's handed down. So uh, you may say that the, you may hear this and say, well, God doesn't operate like that today. He does. He most certainly does. And I'm living proof. And you wait till I tell you about uh, healings. You wait till I tell you about uh, my Bible college being completely paid for. I mean, there's, I mean, mission trips and what I've seen. I mean, it's amazing. I'm telling you what, right now, uh, my wife, story of her and I, our testimony. I'm telling you what, these things are indeed for today. And anybody that tells you that they are not, I'm telling you, <clears throat> and and this may be offensive to some, uh, some, some religious people, but it's it's there's no scripture to stand on that says that these things passed away, none, zero, zilch, nada. Okay, these things are for today. If you believe that, if you've been believing that and been taught that, that is not true. That is a lie. And so, I, I, I'm telling you, God wants more for you. And like I said, right here, the doctrines and traditions of man. Mark 7, 13. The doctrines and traditions of man make the word of God of no effect. The reason that we say we, play, we, we plead and, and we beg God, you know, when you don't know his will. what Your word of God, the Bible, it's his will for your life. Okay? And so, uh, Matthew <clears throat> 22 uh matthew 22 29 says this <clears throat> jesus answered and this is talking about jesus talking to the pharisees okay <clears throat> you are mistaking not knowing scripture not knowing the scriptures nor the power of god uh and i say this i'm not trying to like i said i'm not trying, I'm not trying to bash you i'm trying to wake you up i love you and i love you with all my heart and god loves you and he does not want to see you stuck okay God loves you too much to see you saved and stuck. To see you sit there and you wait for you wait for God to come back. Or you sit there and you're saying, Well, I either die and go to heaven or or he's gonna come back. It's not good enough. It's that philosophy and that theology has not done anything. And I'm I'm telling you right now, that's not done anything. And I love you too much to let you sit there and do that. So God wants more for you. He wants you to know his voice. He wants you to know him intimately. He wants you to know him and hear him in your heart and to say, that's the Lord. He woke me up today and he loves me because I don't know it because he said he loved me. And so anyway, uh, <clears throat> that's my story on how he read. Those are scriptures that he took me through. Uh, my testimony on how he taught me how to read the word. And so I love you. Um, if you need prayer, reach out to me. Um, if you're a woman though, Reach out to my wife and ask for prayer. We we do not do the we do the uh, 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 oh Billy Graham rule. Okay, women talk to her, men talk to me. Okay, I don't handle any any uh, women messages whatsoever. But uh, the men reach out to me. I want to chat with you. I love you. I want to pray with you. If you don't know the Lord, I say this to you: God has so much for you. He loves you. If you're hurt, uh, you know there's something more out there. Uh, talk to me. I want to hear from you. I want to pray with you. Uh, God loves you so much. He, does, he loves you too much to leave you where you're at. Okay? Romans 12, 2 says, Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The mind there is the soul. Okay? Which means psyche. Psyche. That's where we get our word psyche. The word soul, spirit, soul, and body, which I'll be te teaching here, here in a little bit, uh, is your mind, your will, and your emotions. But anyway, uh, don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The truth of the Word of God. It will set you free. I love you. I bless you. In Jesus' name.